Oh, hey, what's up? Uh, so I'm making breakfast. I'm uh, processing some food. This is... What did I do with this last night? All right, here's what's in there. You see these carrots, these slivers of carrots. And you see the bean sprouts. Well, I added those. I stir-fried those and added those to this other stuff, which is a pulverized mixture of... Well, let's see. I pulverized onion, garlic, poached chicken breast, uh, shiitake mushrooms, and then gave that some action in the wok. And what did I do with that? Did I just... Oh, that's right. That was the enchilada filling. All right, so I've got some left over. Don't have any more enchilada sauce. Don't feel like making any. So I decided to make a burrito <clears throat> with the leftovers because there's just about enough but I'm bulking it up with some more vegetables I tasted it it needs a little bit more sweet a little bit more spicy so I'm gonna turn on the gas start warming that up you I need you to watch this for me for a second because I gotta go into the other room and get something I'll be back Did you mess it up? No, nope, it's still good. Okay. So this is a little bit under-seasoned as it is. I'm going to add, of course, I might do some dark Pearl River Bridge dark soy sauce. Just a touch. And some Lao Ga Ma. That might do it. That might take care of this. Lao Ga Ma first. That's chili crisp. You all know what that is. Tiny bit. This dark soy sauce goes a really long way. So much sodium. What the hell? A little bit of Panda Brand. Panda Brand. Oyster sauce. Which I think this actually, this oyster sauce actually kind of tastes like Sarimp. 
All right, I think that should do it for the seasoning. Tempted to put gutcher John in everything now, since I have a little tub of it. I'm resisting the temptation today. I think this actually needs a little bit of sweetness. Don't we all need a little bit of sweetness? Broken rice. Uh, this this gunk here is broken rice. Pulverized shiitake mushrooms, pulverized poached chicken, and a couple of arbol chilies, chili arbol. Uh, shit, what else is in here? A lot of onion, pulverized, and then tonight I added. Carrot and bean sprouts, and then I jacked up the seasoning with a little bit of dark soy sauce. Uh, did I give it hoisin? No, a little bit of dark soy sauce, a little bit of oyster sauce, and about a teaspoon of chili crisp. It's pretty good. It almost reminds me of uh, the pulverized stuff, almost reminds me of tempeh a little bit. Tempe, Arizona. So you know the deal probably with um, when you're making burritos, you always wonder like how they get the burritos so big and get the, um, what do you call them? What do you call them? What do you call them? Get the tortillas so like soft and stretchy. You can't just like put this on a grill. You have to crank up your griddle really high. You moisten both sides of your tortilla, which I'm about to do. And it's okay if you do it like a minute ahead and just like let it soak in. But when it hits that super hot griddle, it steams and it softens up and it's less apt to tear. It's more prone to stretching. Then it's more prone to stretching. Uh, burr, burr, burr. Watch this again. Okay, I gotta shred, I forgot, I have to shred some cheese. That's okay, the griddle needs to heat up quite a bit. What else can I put in this? Do I have any sour cream? I probably don't. I want like some, a fresh flavor. So, instead of adding dairy because I don't have sour cream, I'm going to go with our old friend, Scallion. I think one will cut it. shredding here.
This is a Monterey Jack cheese. It's very popular with boring people because of its mild flavor. But to jack it up just a little bit, I have some cheese from Lika, which is a uh, hilly, mountainous, somewhat continental region of Dalmatia. And this is an ancient style of cheese. Well, I don't know about ancient. Might have been around since like the 1500s or something like that. That's not really ancient. At 49 years old is not ancient either. F went high. I'm going to use all that cheese just because I'm hungry. So, did you know that if you save the ends of the uh, scallion with the roots on them, you can plant them and they'll grow back, and you just keep doing that. You never have to buy scallions again, as long as you have dirt. Oh, these greens that I added in here, that is some cilantro from yesterday's enchiladas. Um, and some other scallion. And those were just sitting on the cutting board out, so they've kind of dried out, and they take on a different character when they are dry. So, and the fresh scallion, too. That's a very... It's a nice looking filling, I think. And it's completely, it's pretty unidiomatic. Um, I, some of you may have noticed that I cook kind of outside the lines a little bit. <clears throat> uh, I like unidiomatic food. I like things that don't have names yet. Oh God, that was my gut, wasn't it? Things that don't have names. All right, I think that griddle's ready for this tortilla. I will, here's how this is gonna go. I'm going to make this tortilla moist on both sides. I'm gonna hit it on the griddle real super quick, and I'm gonna flip it over real quick, and as soon as I flip it over, the cheese is gonna go on so the heat from the griddle starts to melt the cheese a little bit. And then I'm gonna pull it off. I'm gonna put it here, I'm gonna put my filling in, and I'm gonna roll it. And then it's gonna be a burrito. And then I'm gonna turn off the camera and go away. Oh boy, that is moist. Look at all that moisture. Look at the moisture coming off of that tortilla. Okay, it's ready. Yeah, and it, so it starts to kind of soak in a little bit, and then you poof, put it on the grill just for a second. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it's nice and hot, so the tortilla is going to bubble. Bubble, bubble. Uh, which side do I want to start rolling from? Oh yeah, it's steamy and stretchy and wonderful. Just, just wonderful. I'm gonna use this. This one end of the tortilla is a little bit skinnier than the other one. Right. Oh shit! This is gonna be good. Pardon my French. Oh, damn. So, that looks...
that's really good. It's nice and colorful. I don't know if you can see that. I want to show it to you before I roll it real quick. Oh, so nice and colorful. All right, you know how to roll a tortilla? First, tighten up your filling, and then bring the sides over on top, and then start to roll from the back. And keep your fingers on there so your filling stays tight. You roll, and the ends are closed, and it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. You can wrap it in foil and go eat it anywhere. Now, the uh, seam, it's not really the seam, it's uh, where the, oh shit, it's not perfect. A little tuck. Give it a little tuck tuck. Now it's perfect. All right, so you put that and you kind of flatten it against the grill. And you can flatten down the burrito too. And the heat from the grill, if you can believe it, will kind of, um, as the moisture comes out of the tortilla, it starts to hold its shape and become crispy. Perhaps you've seen this phenomenon before. But since it's uh, since it becomes like uh, firmer, less moist, less stretchy, um, it, it holds. And actually, I, you can at this point. I'm turning off the griddle. We'll just let the residual heat do its job. And um, and then I'm going to eat it. I think that's about it. I could fry it a la chimichanga, but that would be a mess. And I don't want any greasy food for breakfast. I don't want to get gr cramps. Gramps. I had gramps last week. Painful gramps. Okay, now I'm going to give you an update on what's, uh, what's to come uh, while that burrito is sealing on the residual heat. All right, so you've seen pictures of this before from me, probably. It's cod liver in its own oral. Uh, what I want to do with this, and I got two cans of it, I am going to remove the liver from the oral, and then I'm going to air out the livers in the refrigerator until they form a pellicle. Pellicle is a membrane, it's like a tacky membrane that starts to form on things that have been moist but then start to become dry, like meat. But that pellicle actually uh, is what you need on meat when you smoke it, uh, whether it's meat or fish or whatever. Um, a good pellicle will uh, hold all of the smoke flavor very well. And so what am I going to do with the cod liver oral? I am going to infuse it with some spices in like a Spanish slash Portuguese style. S and then once I smoke the livers, after the livers are smoked, and I'm going to smoke them on cherry, after the livers are smoked, they're going to go in a mason jar in the infused oil. And the infused oil, I believe, is going to have a little bit of star anise, a little bit of cinnamon, probably coriander, and a chili pepper. I will look up the spices and see about that. Also, what's coming up, I have, uh, you probably remember that I started to uh, clean and fillet some mackerel. Um, I hope you're enjoying the sight of this burrito, by the way. But anyway, so the mackerel I soaked in salt water and then took it out of the salt water and soaked it overnight in plain water. So the flesh 
has, well, I'll tell you about it when I do that video. But we're going to keep going on the mackerel, broiled mackerel, sabayaki style, which is classic Japanese crispy skin broiled mackerel. Okay, that's it. Later.